everyone, this is Rihanna from A Frugal Life, and today I'm gonna to be talking to you a little bit about sustainable living on a budget. So eco living or sustainable living is a big thing right now, and it has been for a few years now, but sometimes being sustainable and being frugal um, seems like a hard thing to do together. So I'm gonna talk about ways that you can be sustainable and eco-friendly and be frugal at the same time. So being sustainable does not mean that you have to spend a ton of money. So sustainable living is also sometimes called earth harmony living or zero net living or eco living. There's a lot of eco minimalism. There's a lot of different terms for it, but, but basically you would be making small to large positive changes in your life, which would make it so that you are not creating a negative impact on the earth altogether. So if you're interested in something like that, if there are ways you can do it frugally, let's talk about several of those ways now. So number one, and it's something I talk about in many of my frugal living videos, but it goes with sustainable living also, is buy secondhand. And not just for clothes, but for furniture, for toys, for books, for all different sorts of things. If you are a frugal living person or a sustainable living person, you want to first think about buying something secondhand. So there are so many ways you can buy anything secondhand, including phones, TVs, almost anything you buy that's not consumable can be purchased secondhand. So there's two things about this. If you purchase secondhand, you're obviously saving a lot of money, but also you're saving the earth because you're not creating an environment where somebody had to make something new for you. So you're not using the resources that of course caused a new item to be made and you're taking a item that was already made and using it further even though somebody else does not want to use it anymore. So secondhand is the number one way that you can be sustainable and frugal at the same time. Number two, and it goes with both frugal living and sustainable living again, and also relates to that secondhand is borrow rather than buy. So if you don't want to spend the money to buy something, whether it's new or used, you can actually borrow a lot of different items. So especially things like hand tools, gardening tools, kitchen appliances that you may only use once, can be shared within family members, extended family members, and especially neighbors. Um, neighbors are great to share things with if you don't have the ability to or don't want to spend the extra money on something large. So you can share your lawnmower with your neighbor, you can share, again, kitchen appliances with your neighbor, you can share kids' clothes, can go from one person to the other, like hand-me-downs. So borrowing something is a great way to spend no money at all and not really impact the environment at all because the item's already been purchased, it's already been used by somebody else, and you can borrow it. There are some groups online where you can swap and borrow things, but the best way to do it is just to put a call out on Facebook to your friends and neighbors and tell them that you are willing to swap, trade, or just borrow things back and forth between them and then consider what you have and what you can lend and then make an agreement to lend it out or borrow it. So it's really easy to do. And way back when, when my grandmother was little, she used to tell me all the time that most people would get together with their neighbors and their friends and family and agree on what they were going to buy. So some person would buy a lawnmower, another person would buy a KitchenAid or anything that's infrequently used can be bought together with a group and you can then borrow and lend them out to each other as needed, of course, and that's a great way to save money and be sustainable. Another thing you can do is to repair before you buy. So my husband is huge on this. Almost anything that happens in his shop to break, he will try to repair before he buys a new one. So there are many things, tools especially, which have been repaired over and over again, vehicles which have been prepared, repaired over and over again, and <coughs> And it was actually a thing in our house when my niece lived with us when she was very small is that Uncle Mikey could fix anything. So if one of her toys broke, she wouldn't ask for a new one. She would bring the toy to Mikey and ask him to fix it. And typically he could. So there are lots of things you can fix. Even kids' toys can be repaired before they are purchased new. Next is a little bit controversial for some people, but lots of people in the frugal living community and the sustainable communities do this, and that is to reuse things that you may not think about. One of these is reusable period products. So if you're a woman, then go ahead and stick here for this tip. If you are not, you can skip to the next tip. But reusable period products are great because period products are so crazy expensive. They are very expensive. They get more expensive all the time and they of course are something that's just thrown away. So they have reusable pads you can purchase on Amazon. They have diva cups and things like that and now they even have think period panties which of course are way more expensive than maybe the diva cups so you maybe want to try one of those first. <laughs> but reusable period product um, is great. They are washable and you can just reuse them over and over again. It's a one-time expense and you don't have to purchase them 
throughout your lifetime every single month. Next is baggies. So the quality of plastic Ziploc bags and things like that is going down, down, down because they don't want you to wash them out and use them over and over again. It's actually a super pain to wash them out because they do rip easily. They do sell, and I will put some links down below, reusable silicone bags now. So they're just like, so they are just like Ziploc bags and then they zip at the top. They usually have different sizes. They have different colors to go with your uh, decor and they are dishwasher safe. Many of them can be used as sous vide bags, put into a boiling pot and actually cooked in. They can usually be frozen and then unfrozen, microwaved, all sorts of things. So they are really useful. They are worth the investment. They are a little bit pricey, but as long as you're gonna use them over and over again, they actually turn out to be way less than Ziploc bags in the long run. So it is a super great investment to be both frugal and sustainable. Next, and I have a prop for this one, is reusable water bottles. So this one is plastic, which is not super uh, popular in sustainable living community, but I did want a huge bottle that was okay to carry. It wasn't too heavy. Um, and I did want something that was fairly inexpensive. And I feel like it's okay both being sustainable and frugal because I use it over and over again every single day. So instead of using eight 12 ounce bottles of water, I fill this once, Throughout the day, I add ice and I'm good to go. I have my water for the day and I'm saving ton on plastic reusable bottles. So I just saved this one bottle. It cost me like 10 bucks. I'll put the link down below and it was totally worth it for me. So you can buy metal bottles and wooden bottles, even all sorts of different reusable bottles. I hate the taste of the metal bottles. I cannot do it. I'm sorry guys, but I feel like it's okay to use the plastic ones because I'm only using this one and not dozens and dozens of them. So reusable water bottles, one for each family is a great way to go. My husband has one just this size, um, so we don't have to buy lots of little water bottles. We just use this reusable one. We also don't wash a lot of cups because we try to drink as much water as possible, so most of what we're drinking during the day is out of this bottle. So it is a great way to be both frugal, sustainable, and easy cleanup. Next is rechargeable batteries. This is great for remotes. Um, my camera lighting sometimes use batteries. Um, lots of different things use batteries in your house. If you have kids, you use a lot of batteries for toys and purchasing them over and over again is terrible for the environment. They go into a landfill. It's just not a great idea and it's very expensive. So reusable batteries are super worth the cost. They are an investment you have to have. You can get some double A's, some triple A's, some D's, some C's, and then you just pop them in your recharger. I'll put a link down below to a great one um, and just keep them charged at all times. So when you wanna switch out something in your remote, you don't have to go searching for a battery that you're going to toss when it's done. You just pull one out of the charger and use it and pop the used one back in the charger. So it's a continuous cycle. You're not purchasing things over and over again. The only time you have to buy batteries is when you buy something new and you need additional batteries to go in that item. So it is a fantastic sustainable solution. The next I have is to DIY your own items. There is thousands of videos and blog posts and things on Pinterest on how to DIY your own items. Every time you pick something up, look at it and think, can I make this cheaper and more sustainably? So you can make all sorts of things yourself. You can make bread and spice mixes and pancake mixes and things for the kitchen. You can make your own art supplies. You can make your own beauty supplies. There are lots of different things you can do to make your own things. When you are searching on the internet and you wanna make something, say a blush or a chapstick or something for the kitchen, just put the word sustainable in front of it and you will get some ideas to do a sustainable version of your DIY and typically it is usually cheaper so just keep some reusable jars on hand from whatever you get rid of or whatever you buy some on hand so you can put your reusable items in there and your DIY items in there and make your own of everything there are so many things you can make so think about it pop that in Pinterest I promise you will get thousands of results on DIY or make your own beauty and kitchen products. The next one I have mentioned before because it is a super, super, super fantastic frugal tip, but it is to eat less meat. Meat is very expensive and it's only going up every day. It is crazy to buy no matter what kind of meat you buy. I do have a video up above on how to save on meat if you do wanna buy it, but one of the ways that I save altogether and 
be more sustainable for the environment is to eat less meat. So I typically only eat it once a day or sometimes on certain weeks only a couple or three times a week. So I just, um, on Weight Watchers right now, so there are very, very specific things I can eat. So I have been eating more chicken, but in the past I barely ate meat at all. Um, so if you can have a meatless day with your entire family and make something like potato soup or a meat-free chili, it is a very inexpensive way to save some money and is more sustainable for the environment. Next, I'm going to put my usual disclaimer up here and possibly a picture. Again, there is a dog snoring in my office. I refuse to make her leave because she gets so sad about it, but it has been mentioned in the comments below. If you can hear my dog snoring in this video, post a comment down below. Um, she would love to be acknowledged, but she is going to stay in here and she may be snoring throughout the video, so I'm sorry about that. So now we are on to number 10, and that is drinks. Or one of the things that cause a lot of trash in the world is one-time use things like soda cans and soda bottles. So I'm not gonna tell you to get rid of your soda. I myself am a soda addict. I'm trying to get rid of it, but I have not yet. And I know that a lot of things get thrown away. My husband brings diet soda, um, and we have found a way to remain super frugal and super sustainable with his diet soda, and that is to get a soda stream. So we have had a soda stream that we have had for like 10 years now. It cost us like $69 in the beginning and now we just have to buy syrup. It seems like the syrup is expensive, but if you work out the actual cost of syrup and you purchase it on sale in places like Target, you can actually get syrup down to the point that your soda is costing you instead of 50 to a dollar, or instead of 50 cents to a dollar per soda, it's costing you like 13 cents per soda. So there are also other DIY mixes you can put in your soda because the soda stream actually just carbonates it. So you can put things like apple juice, you can put things like crystal light, you can put all sorts of different really cheap flavorings in your soda and make some great custom flavors as well. So DIY soda stream syrups online. And if you want to purchase your soda stream, I will put a link down below, but I am here to tell you, people say it's more expensive. It is not. If you DIY your own syrups, it is very inexpensive to use soda stream as a soda alternative. So the next is to make do or reuse what you already have. So before you go out and purchase something new, make sure you've exhausted all options in your house, um, all options to borrow, of course, and to get secondhand, but all options to reuse items you already have. So if you have old t-shirts that can be reused as rags, they can be turned into grocery bags. Um, a lot of things can be done with them. Books that are falling apart can actually be used as art supplies. We had tons of magazines when I was a kid because print magazines were all the rage back then and my grandmother loved them. And those, gr those print magazines provided for tons and tons of collages and arts projects and things like that. So whatever is in your hand and you're about to throw away, think about if you can reuse it, it is more sustainable for the environment. Now I'm also all about frugal minimalism and not having too many things in your house. So I'm not telling you to store up 10,000 egg cartons. I'm just telling you if you need something, see if there's something in your house you can use instead. My husband is forever um, making tools or reusing one tool for another purpose before he buys another one. So there are great ways you can reuse items you already have before you purchase new items. So one of the things we do um, to reuse items we already have, which I think is super cute, is to reuse glass jars. So things like Prego jars and salsa jars make a great size um, for drinking glasses and they are washable, um, sometimes even microwavable for a few minutes if you wanna heat up a drink, but we mostly just use them in the dishwasher and we drink cold drinks out of them. Um, I have also used mason jars from my canning for drink glasses. I do have one small set of drinking glasses that I got for free somewhere, but I actually prefer the larger jars and mason jars as drinking glasses. So you do not have to buy drinking glasses. You have an unlimited wealth of them when you purchase food in the grocery store. So the next one is number 13. It is cloth diapers. Do not uh, head off the video yet. I've still got a couple more really, really great ideas for you. I don't have any personal experience with cloth diapers, but I am all about doing it for the environment if you have to. Um, and if you're willing to, Debt Free Dana is one of my favorite YouTubers and her link is actually on the channel page um, below or you can just search Debt Free Dana and she actually started her channel with tons of cloth diaper videos. So if you wanna learn all about cloth diapers, she's the expert. I'm not gonna pretend to be an expert. Go to her channel and look it up. Look up cloth diapering by Debt Free Dana and she will give you great ideas. Um, it is very, very inexpensive compared to purchasing diapers every month and it is much better for the environment if you wash them yourself. So go ahead and take a look at that option if you have babies or have babies on the way. 
Number 14 is wool dryer balls. I will post a link to some down below that I like. They're very, very, very inexpensive and they can replace your dryer sheets forever as long as you don't lose the dryer ball. Um, so just be sure that you don't lose them when you are taking the laundry in and out. Um, but dryer draw balls will reduce static and they also reduce drying time in your dryer. So it saves you on electricity as well. And it prevents you from throwing away those dryer sheets over and over again. In addition to, of course, saving electricity. So it's super sustainable and eco living as well. Last but not least is reusable grocery bags. So they sell them at every grocery store now, 99 cents, a dollar, two dollars, depending on what grocery store you're in. Um, they're pretty good quality and you can reuse them for other things, but I'm going to tell you that you should not buy reusable grocery bags until you look into your other options. So reusable grocery bags you can come by for free all the time. Whenever I get prescriptions at Kaiser, they now give them to you in a reusable bag that I use for groceries until it falls apart. It's not super high quality. Um, you can make reusable grocery grocery bags that are super cute and very durable out of things like pet food bags and chicken feed bags. Um, you can make reusable grocery bags out of old t-shirts and other things around the house. So look up DIY reusable grocery bags and make your own before you purchase those ones in the store and put more things out into the environment that have to be thrown away. Um, so it's not really sustainable if you keep buying things over and over again. The other things is if you're caught unaware at a grocery store and you have to pay for bags because you don't have your reusable grocery bags out, nowadays those bags are so sturdy you can use them over and over and over again so they're meant to be reusable. So if you are in a place where you have to buy bags, you paid 10 cents for a, a bag in the grocery store, make sure you save those in the car so you can use them next time. So that's it. Thank you for joining me again. As always, if you liked this video, I really would appreciate if you press the like video. It helps me so much on this channel. If you want to make sure you don't miss our future videos, hit subscribe um, and you'll get access to our community tab as well when you hit subscribe. So you'll get some more information there. And of course, as always, I love you all so much. Thank you for stopping by and please watch my next video. Bye.